Today's Because Science is brought to you by the new movie Slight in theaters this Friday. What kind of thoughts do you have when you watch Attack on Titan? Mine are usually like, wow, this is brutal. Jeez, I don't think I want to watch this anymore. But now that season two is out, I had another thought about a about a question you've been asking me for years. Could 3D maneuver gear actually be deadly for its user as well as the Titan? Now, when I say that 3D MG could be deadly to humans too, I don't mean Survey Corps on Survey Corps violence. I mean the rigs themselves could be deadly just from what we see them do to their users. Throughout the anime, high school sized humans are whipped around at immense speeds and disorienting angles, and we just aren't built for that kind of 3D movement, it can kill us. Does the mobility necessary to fight a Titan itself mean certain death? First, we need some limits. This is gonna sound weird, but try to feel how heavy your blood is. Can, can you feel it? We have about four kilograms of blood coursing through all of our bodies right now, and that's a lot. And because it's a lot, your body has a hard time pumping it around your body, especially if the weight of your blood changes. When you accelerate, your weight changes, and that's because your weight is actually a force dependent on your mass and how quickly you are accelerating. On Earth, we are accelerating towards its surface at 9.8 meters per second per second. That's what gives us our sense of heaviness. If you were outside of this acceleration, you would feel weightless like in space. So if you go faster than this, if you're increasing your velocity more than around 10 meters per second, every second you'll be pulling more than one G. And then you become heavier, you feel more weight. Eventually, your blood will actually be too heavy to pump around your body or be forced into your brain or your feet if you accelerate too fast and you'll, well, you oh! Ow, oh, my nape! Ow, oh, leave, I got my nape! Human tolerance for these blood heavying forces has a lot to do with the direction of acceleration and the body's orientation during that acceleration because it matters if blood is being pulled out of your head or forced into your eyeballs. So for example, fighter pilots can pull nine Gs when being forced straight upwards. We can only withstand, however, three Gs when the direction is downward. However, if we're moving in the horizontal direction, like me moving oh, towards you on the screen, we can withstand 45 Gs. And that limit was set by badass John Stapp when he strapped himself into a rocket sled. Since most Survey Corps moves look more or less horizontal towards their targets, we're gonna set this as our ultimate G-load limit. Now we have to figure out if the 3D maneuver gear pulls its users faster than these limits based on what we see in the anime. Um, I gotcha, I gotcha. I'm gonna use this scene as a representative example. In it, we see Mikasa rocketing herself towards a Titan across maybe dozens of meters inside the city all in under a second. I know it looks like she is going fast, but she is going really fast. And we know this because she is traveling more or less perfectly horizontally, even though she is technically in free fall. No matter how quickly something is going horizontally, if there are no vertical forces, that object in free fall will hit the ground in the same amount of time as if it weren't traveling horizontally at all. For example, two bullets, one dropped and one fired from the same height will hit the ground at exactly the same time. So to determine if Mikasa and others could survive such a maneuver, we have to determine how much time she has to travel the distance we see her travel and what acceleration she would need to subject her body to to travel that distance in that time. To make this maneuver as close to what we see in the show as possible, let's assume that Mikasa won't change her vertical distance by anything more than one meter. That way, when she reaches the Titan, she will still be within striking distance with her sword. This distance determines our allowable freefall time and how much time she has to travel. 
We have all our parameters, so now it's time for an attack on not writing math. <laughs> it kind of, oh, oh, he got my nape. This graph and this poorly drawn Titan is what we will use to plot Mikasa's movement. As you can see, we're only giving her one meter to work with in the vertical direction so that she can still swipe at the neck when she gets there, and she has to travel maybe a city block, maybe 30 meters away to get to her target. Now, according to free fall equations, that gives her just half a second to work with. Now, if we use the equations of motion, we can plot Mikasa's vertical and horizontal position at any one time to see what acceleration we need to plug into these equations to make sure she hits her target. Let's do it. We know that she has to go faster than free fall, so let's start off with a relatively safe two Gs. At this acceleration, Mikasa will not make it. It is simply not enough acceleration to get her to the target in time. She would hit the ground before she hit the Titan. But these kids are trying to protect their city, right? So let's get dangerous. At 10 Gs of acceleration, Mikasa doesn't quite make it. Let's go for maximum Gs. At 45 Gs, Mikasa would totally make it to the nape of the titan's neck before she fell too far to swipe at it with her sword. This means that even though it would be incredibly hard on the body, there is some survivable range here, as you can see, that you could travel dozens of meters in just a fraction of a second and end up more or less where you fired your grappling hook. So, would 3D maneuver gear actually be deadly to its user? Well, it comes very close but not necessarily. There is some survivable range at which you could fire a grappling hook into a Titan, travel dozens of meters in just a fraction of a second and arrive at your target in time to swipe at it before you fell too far and you wouldn't die. And there are winches that we have that can pull with the force required to accelerate someone that size that quickly. And the scene that we looked at lasted under a second, which checks out. And it's plausible that these attack on teens could undergo significant training which they do to survive more G-forces than the average person. <sighs> two mostly plausible anime scenarios in two weeks. I guess anime physics isn't always bonkers. Because science. <laughs>Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like this one and on Instagram and Facebook where I'm now posting mini episodes like the one I did today. Thanks. If you're still in the mood for more science, may I recommend checking out our new sponsor, Slight, in theaters tomorrow. Slight is about a teenage street magician who uses his brilliant mind to create amazing tricks and illusions, but when he ends up crossing the wrong group of criminals, he must rely on that same brilliant mind to save himself and his family. It's a very cool movie. It stars Jacob Lattimore, Dulé Hill, Say Chill Gabrielle, and it's from the same people that brought you Get Out, so you know it's all what people are going to be talking about on Facebook next morning. So, check it out because you know the spoilers, they is a coming. That's slight in theaters tomorrow. I probably ruined her name, didn't I? I did, I did I say Mikasa the whole, the whole time? Well, you know what they say, say in, uh, in Japan, Mikasa is Tsukasa. <laughs>